Hi, my name is Russ Elsner. I'm the APM Technology Director for AppNet Technologies. Business is driving IT operations management to become more application-centric. Meanwhile, applications are becoming increasingly complex. AppNet's continuing its tradition of excellence in delivering high-definition application performance management. This means we have both breadth of coverage across multiple application domains, as well as deep forensic data, and that all of this information is delivered with the right scope to solve the right problem. High-level information for dashboards, actionable information for operations to do triage, and deep forensic data for ultimate root cause analysis. Today, we're gonna to be walking through some examples of this high-definition APM. Let's start with a dashboard. This dashboard is a high-level example of services across an enterprise. This gives big picture visibility to the overall state of applications and users in the environment. Along the left-hand side, you're going to see various business applications that are important to the environment. And along the top, you're going to see various locations. As all, if all the lights were green, that means all the users at all the locations are getting good performance from those services. But as you can see in this example, some of the locations are red and yellow, indicating that there are problems with certain applications for certain user communities. For example, we can see that internet users of the public website are actually experiencing significant performance problems as they access data on this key business application. Let's go ahead and drill deeper into that particular problem. We know that problem, there's a problem with the uh, public website for internet users. So let's investigate what's happening. We're going to use OpNet's high-definition APM to drill into the public website to get key statistics. So you see that as I click on the left-hand side, the right-hand graphs and bottom graph populate with information. For, for the public website, we can see the load in terms of hits per second and slow pages per second. We can see the actual page time of all pages on the website. And then we can actually see the application broken down into individual pages which correspond to business transactions. We can see how different parts of the application are behaving correctly and parts of the application are having problems. We can further take this information to drill in to figure out exactly what's wrong with this application. So for example, here's a website or web page on the site that is experiencing both high page response time and it's having a high percentage of slow pages. We can drill in to investigate what's going on there. So I go ahead and drill into the examples of people hitting that particular component of the web page and sort by the slowest users. So although the average response time was somewhere on the order of four seconds, you can see here that the actual response time range is anywhere from two seconds up to 13 seconds. So users to this particular part of this application are experiencing a fairly broad range of performances. We can further drill into this particular example, so the slowest user of that particular web page, to dig deeper. What we're now looking at is a drilled in version of that specific web page. So that user had a response time of about 14 seconds. We want to know exactly where was that time spent. Is it caused by the server or is it caused by the network? That lets us get the right team involved. This is that web page broken down object by object in terms of what components were on the overall page. You can see the duration that those objects took to load on the right-hand side. The colors correspond to the cause of the delay. Red is delay getting the request up to the server. Yellow is the server processing. And green is delivering the response back to the client. So you can see that this particular web page has a couple of very large object, objects that take quite a bit of time. And that delay is almost completely dominated by network effects, delivery of the request up and the payload back down. So in this particular case, the website is slow to internet users, and it seems to be primarily a network problem. We could then drill deeper to figure out exactly what link on the network is causing it, or we could give information to the application development team to help them tune their application for slow internet users. Now let's take a look at another example. This particular dashboard is more application-centric. It's really intended for the team who supports this particular business application. In this one location, we actually have information about all the various tiers, network components, Java code, and database tiers of, that support this application. Along the top, you're going to see information about the overall performance based on offices. You're going to see performance for individual users. And you're going to actually see page response time for the application of interest, the stock trading application. Along the bottom, we can actually see 
the response time of requests going in, into each component of the application. The first one is the web tier, the second one is the WebSphere Java tier, and the third one is the Oracle database tier. Let's focus on WebSphere to start. We can see from WebSphere that the average response time into and out of WebSphere is about three tenths of a second. But we also see these weird spikes that happen that go all the way up to about seven tenths of a second. This is somewhat troubling. We'd like to investigate what the cause of these spikes are. In fact, we can see from the colors that the cause of that spike is actually processing inside of WebSphere. We know this isn't a network problem. We know this is actually a server or application problem. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the CPU utilization of that WebSphere server. This graph is showing us that CPU utilization for that tier has been somewhere between 40 and 50% over the last hour. That doesn't seem to be the problem. We can either go so far as to show the individual processes that are running inside WebSphere and figuring out what's consuming CPU and memory. Once again, we can see that Java.exe is the thing that's consuming the majority of CPU, and that's the only thing that this tier is supposed to be running. So once again, that doesn't seem to be the problem. But we can drill deeper into WebSphere and actually see internals of WebSphere in the code that's running within it. So let's go ahead and do that. What we're now looking at is dashboards about the internal performance inside of WebSphere. What you can see along the left-hand side are actually response time metrics from internal components of the Java code. We can see servlets and JSPs, EJBs, JDBC calls, and we can actually see spikes in performance along uh, the time in which we are experiencing problems at about 3.30 in the afternoon. On the other side, we can actually see metrics about the internals of that Java tier, including CPU utilization, memory performance, I.O., and we can actually track heap over time. These types of metrics are very useful for application teams to figure out exactly what the root cause of the problem is, given the fact that we know it's coming from inside of WebSphere. In fact, we can drill even deeper. We can see specific pieces of code that are causing the performance problems. So you'll actually see specific code blocks that are the most active during our performance problem and the slowest during the performance problem. In this case, you'll actually see specific class and method names that are the cause of the problems. And you'll see different, um, different calls that are being called very frequently and different calls that are taking a long time to execute. Now, this is very actionable information for the developers to go back and tune their applications to fix these problems. To conclude, Opnet's APM Expert Suite provides both broad and deep data for application performance management. It delivers the right information to the right circumstance. This is exactly the workflow and the types of cross-discipline tools that are needed to troubleshoot modern applications. My name is Russ Elsner. Thanks for watching.